Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Nancy Carnavali, and I'm going to be talking to you today about some tips for um, getting back to school. It's that time of year. We have a couple of weeks left, and then the kids will be back to school, and we want to talk about some things to make it a good experience for them. So the first thing I want to talk about is the importance of being positive. This is kind of a bittersweet time of the year because we're excited about going back to school, but yet we're still a little bit living in the summer. Um, so, um, but it, it's very important that we convey to our children positivity. You know, this is one of my favorite quotes by Dr. Seuss. You're off to great places, today is your day, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Again, it's just that importance of being positive, about having a good year, it's a fresh start for everybody. Let's make some good memories and um, show your positivity so our children will see that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get everybody back on schedule. And the, um, the the first thing is sleep. So we have a few more weeks before we go back to school and we gotta get the kids sleeping again. If a lot of children are used to now staying up until 11 or 12 o'clock at night and then sleeping until 10 o'clock in the morning. And of course that's not gonna work when we start school. So we wanna um, change their clock. And the best way to start changing their clock is actually to change their wake up time. So for example, now if the child is used to sleeping in until 10 a.m spend five days waking them up at 9 a.m. Then spend another five days getting them up at eight. And then hopefully another five days later, they'll be ready to wake up at seven. By doing that, then you're naturally getting them more tired at nighttime so that you can start to pull back on the evening time. But we can't expect our kids to sleep until 10 a.m. in the morning and then be able to try to get them to bed at, at seven or eight o'clock at night. So work on getting them up in the morning, get them going, and then they'll start to be tired at night. So change that clock. Um, we also want to start with the sleep routine. Again, we've all gotten into very bad habits. We need to start to have that sleep routine at nighttime, your, um, brush your teeth, um, read your book together, and then bedtime. So the three Bs we call it. We need to start to have that routine. Again, routine helps us all to adjust. Turn off the electronics. Do not have a TV in the room. And at least one hour before bed, we should kind of turn off the TV, the electronics, the computer to avoid that blue light and to get their minds to calm down. Um, even things like exciting books, don't leave them right before bed because then they're gonna be up at night. Keep the house cool, turn on fan, maybe so white noise and keep the house quiet. Mornings are so important because they set the tone for the day. And I remember when I was um, had my children, if we had a rough morning, we would all have a bad day. The kids would have a bad day at, at, at school. My day was bad at work because we were all fighting in the morning. So you want to make mornings easy and, and positive. So do as much as possible the night before. Help the child choose their clothes, make sure that shoes are in the right place, get the backpack packed up. Um, near the door. So we want to make it really simple so there's no fighting and no chaos in the mornings. You can have a, a checklist um, and then don't put the TV on right away. A lot of you know, children can't get ready for school and try to be watching TV at the same time. If your child has time left over and you want to put the TV or something iPad on, um, if they're ready to go out the door, that's something you can consider, but definitely don't have it on until they are ready for the day. So I want to go through some tips for a successful school year. And the first one is really the importance of getting involved. And there's something called this school home connection that no matter income or background, students with involved parents are more likely to have higher grades, better test scores, attend school regularly, they have better social skills, and they show improved behavior and adapt well to school. So this involvement in your child's education is really critical. And last year we lost a lot of that because of COVID and everybody being on digital and, and parents couldn't go into the school. They, they didn't know the teacher. They didn't know what the classroom was like. I'm hoping that that's better this year. And it's important that you just get into the class, meet the teacher, volunteer, communicate with the teacher. And I, I know it's hard as a working parent. I, it was hard for me to get into the kids' school but just an hour every few months to attend some of their plays, bring in the cupcakes for their birthday. And again, just be part of the classroom here and there so the children know that you're interested. They love to have their parents involved. 
The other important thing, of course, is role modeling. The best students come from homes where education is revered and, and books are read. These, um, and parents see their children, parents, the children see their parents reading to them. The most accurate predictors of school and achievement in children are, is not family income or social status, but the extent to which the family and the home environment encourages learning and communicates expe reasonable expectations, not over the top expectations, but reasonable expectations for their child's achievement and becomes involved in their education. So we just want to let our parent, our kids know that we care about their education, education is important, and we're going to support them through that. And again, for you to role model reading yourself, the child will read more. Um, again, tips for successful school year, get involved. Another one is to praise effort. So they've actually done studies and I won't go into the detail, but if you, if you tell a child, um, you did well, you're so smart, you got a good grade, um, they, are, they do and compare that to a child who you say, you worked hard, you, you're a really hardworking um, child or student, it's the child who has been praised for their effort and not their grade, who is willing to keep trying to work harder to, to, um, uh, to, to make it, to, to go that extra step. So remember to always praise effort. Grades are not as important as the effort is. Allow um, children to see your mistakes. Um, we, everybody, every, we all make mistakes and a lot, we need to allow our children to make mistakes and it's okay. See the big picture. So remember if they get a bad grade on something, an essay, or they didn't do well on a test or, or they failed a particular quarter, help them to understand to see the big picture. This is one time in their life and especially high school kids, they get hung up on these things and they think their whole life is over because they failed one test. Rem emphasize to them, this is only one part of your life. You've got to see the big picture down the road. It won't matter. Um, um, organization is another big um, thing that we need to work on as we get back to school. So organization begins at home. We need to create a routine and kind of ease back into that routine. Uh, we need to designate a quiet, neat, clutter-free area for kids to do their homework with all their school supplies, um, identify a central, centrally located place to put their backpacks to avoid that morning rush. Talk it out. You, you can, organization is not just about things in their place. You can also have a routine by talking it out during, let's make our plan for the week when you're driving to school. Okay, on Monday night I have this and on Tuesday night I have that and I have a test on Wednesday so I'm going to study on Tuesday night. So it's okay to even talk those things out with your child during driving or, or other times. Make organizing the backpack part of that nighttime routine. Again, you can either do it together or let the child do it and you, and you watch them do it. Um, and the ultimate goal is for them eventually to do it on their own with a thorough cleaning like every Sunday or every weekend to get rid of all the papers that they don't need. So organization, organization. Come up with a sample schedule. Again, we all, this is a sample schedule and we all need our routine schedule. And once we start to stick with that schedule, things get so much easier. So here's an idea of a sample morning schedule. At 6.45, the child wakes up, you can get them up again, tickle them, sing them a song, hopefully again, to try to get them on that right positive note. Um, then they go to the bathroom, get dressed, brush their hair, seven o'clock breakfast, then they're finished, they brush their teeth, shoes, backpack, lunchbox, out the door. Again, that routine will help you to remember things. After school, again, routine, three o'clock snack, do homework and from 3.10 to 3.30, 3.30, parents check their work, the child packs up the backpack. So I mean, these are just ideas and they're going to vary depending on working parents and their schedule, but it just helps for the children to know their routine. And sometimes putting up little post-its will help them with that and they can use little checklists. Dinner routine, again, have, have the children be part of that. Six o'clock, parents starts food prep. Um, 6.15, kids at the table. 6.30, dinner is served. And I know that doesn't seem like a lot of time for a lot of you to get dinner ready. It depends on, on the family. Some parents may take a couple of hours to get dinner ready. Other working parents need to get that, that dinner going and on the table to um, have the time of the evening. But, and dinner, dinner conversation is very important. Keep the TV off. And just talk about what happened during the day. 
Um, and then at seven, kids clear the table, parents load the dishwasher, and you're done your dinner routine. Sample bedtime routine, again, eight o'clock, or whatever works for you or your family, let them relax in the tub, um, brush their teeth at 820, bathroom, PJs, book, again, that's very important, 850, tuck in, lights out. So again, organization, keep it simple, get, get rid of the clutter, trade out toys. If kids are, their room is surrounded by toys, put them in bins and then put them away. Teach basics of organization at a young age, just socks go in the sock drawer, shirts go in the shirt drawer, so that children um, learn those basics of organization. The other thing is it's important to role model organizations. So as a parent, if you make your bed every day, if you put your dishes in the sink, our children will see that and follow. And again, start children with chores young. They can do little things, put away the silverware, put out the napkins, but allowing them to have a responsibility for, from a young age helps them to realize that they're contributing to their family routine their, and um, also, um, and again, gets them used to that organization at a young age. Time management is important. You need to give children warnings about how much time is available. You have five more minutes, four more minutes. Um, practice how to judge how long something will take, put some clocks around the house. A lot of kids have no idea. They don't have a good internal clock as to how long something may take. So you tell them you've got 15 minutes to take a shower and they're in there for an hour, but they think they were in there for 15 minutes. So, some, so putting a clock out to help them, a timer on, or just even playing a game like, how long do you think it really takes you to take a shower? Well, let's see. Let's put the timer on and we'll see how long it took you. Remember, as we go back to school, we all learn differently. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. Some kids are good at language. Some kids are good at visual motor skills. Um, some kids are good at uh, physical education and, and, um, and athletics. So remember, every child is different, and we want to help the, the children with anything they're weak at and also build to their strengths. So I just want to review a couple of basic study strategies for you that may help your children as you go along. So, um, there's a couple. One is, one is called preview and review. And I'm talking probably now fourth, fifth, and up for, for school. Um, the concept of looking at something before they go into it. So say you know tomorrow's uh, school work is going to be, we're going to be talking about hurricanes. Um, go over the basic terminology with them. Let them just talk, look in the book, see what they're going to talk about. We're going to be talking about wind speed. We're going to be talking about naming hurricanes. So they have an idea so that when they go into class, they, they, can, they can almost hear it again as to what, you're, what they're going to be studying. Then they come home and review, just talk about it again. What you learned today in school? Um, what, what, what did you find out about hurricanes? So preview and review helps to really put things in memory. Another study strategy is what we call encode, retrieve, and encode. And again, this works well for our older children. They have to memorize something, and then you have them, then you do a quiz on it. So you can quiz them. A lot of children like their parents to quiz them. I think that they like the closeness, the bond, and, and just kind of keeping them on task. Um, so you quiz them on whatever it was that they had to memorize. And then they miss some and you go back and say study this part again and then you quiz them again and that encoding retrieving and coding again really works well when you have to study for a test uh, mnemonics are important mnemonics are things like 30 days has september april june and november all the rest of 31 but february it is great and brings us to 28. it's the song that we hear when uh, when we're young and it helps us always to remember this when two vowels go a walk in, the first one does the talking. Rice is a mnemonic that we use in medicine for foot injuries. Rest, ice, compression, elevate, that's how you treat a sprain. Um, Homes is a mnemonic for the five Great Lakes, Lake Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, Superior. And notice that you're taking the first letter of each Great Lake in order to spell out the word homes. And children often resist learning mnemonics because they don't want to learn one more thing, but it is that mnemonic, that memory trick that they will, that will bring them back to this fact that they need to know years later. So try to really encourage it, help them make it up, help them um, find their own, it can be fun. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is short-term memory because some kids are weak with their short-term memory. 
And we can only remember three or four things at once. And if you have ADHD, you may only be able to remember one or two things. So there's something called a rule of three when you're giving your child instructions. You will get their eye contact, you give them a simple direction, and you ask them to repeat it. So if you're asking them to do something, um, that's a way to give them an instruction. Use checklist, write it down, post-its, routine, routine, routine. Again, I tell parents that I will not know where my keys are unless I put them in the same place every day. And if I don't, I'm not gonna be able to drive. So we have to keep, keep with that routine. And this helps with all of those memory issues that we may have. Use a visual schedule um, with the pictures, use technology, pet, spell check, calculators. There's something else called a mantra approach. So if you're trying, you want your child to, for example, go upstairs and get their backpack. You have them say it over and over because a lot of times they'll get lost and they forgot what they're doing. But if you have them say it underneath their breath, backpack, 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 by the time they get upstairs, it's still in their, in their memory and they'll remember. Um, homework ideas. So again, um, we, kids start to have, as we start to do homework, we wanna try to keep homework at the same time each day. Again, routine, routine, routine. You want to have a spot for homework where that's stocked with supplies. You, um, you want to ask teachers about how you'll know about the homework. So are they going to write it down? Are the kids responsible? Are we going to have it on, on the internet? Um, are, there, are they going to send it home ahead of time? So you want to know how the homework is being conveyed to the children so that you can make sure that they're doing their homework. Sit with your child and develop a plan on approaching it. Break it up, break it up into 15 minute increments followed by a short break. You use behavioral charts to motivate your child. When you do this 15 minutes, then you get to have a break and have a snack. Um, address how they're going to get their homework back to school. So again, so we need to get it back in that backpack and send it off in a folder back to school or we need to be emailing it to school, but we've got to have a system to get it back. It's very frustrating, especially for older children that they sit there and they write an essay and they work hours and hours and then forget it to bring, bring it back to school. And sometimes the parent, the teachers will give them a zero on that. So we've got to have a system to get their homework back to school. For a child who's busy in the afternoon or just too tired to do homework in the afternoon, you can ask the teacher for some flexibility. Sometimes kids are better doing homework on a Saturday morning for an hour than they are doing it at five or six o'clock at night. So again, homework can be very stressful, but if we come up with routine and ways to problem solve, we can, um, we can make that better. Again, have some folders to, um, for homework to turn back in, homework done. Um, make sure the child has enough time to write down their homework. Use a study buddy. So a lot of times kids forget what their homework is. They forgot this or they forgot that. If you have the name and number of one other student or, or um, parent that you can call or the child can text, that will then help them. Um, find, if, they're, if they forgot to, do their, forgot to bring home their homework, they can reach out to that study buddy. Uh, work with the teacher regarding the appropriate amount of time to be spent on homework. So in general, we kind of say about 10 minutes per grade. But if your child is, if your third grader is, is coming home and doing two hours worth of homework, there, there's something wrong there. So is it because they didn't learn what they were supposed to learn in school? Um, are, they, are they pushing themselves too hard? So you need to try to figure out if the, if the homework time, the amount of time they're spending on homework does not seem right. Double check with the teacher. Uh, again, keep a homework time and routine, even when the child doesn't have homework. You know, you can use that for extra reading or writing because the more they stay in routine, the better off they are. So there are some teachers who just don't believe in homework or there may be a time of the year that they don't want to have homework. But it just if you can keep that that homework time, 3, 315 and do some reading during that time, again, it keeps that consistency. Um, consider tutoring again this year. It may be a rough year because a lot of kids were virtual or they were virtual and then in class. There were a lot of changes last year and the kids may be behind. So there may be ki kids who, who are behind or struggling and you may need to reach out to get some tutoring. That could be uh, ask there are teachers available after school for some extra tutoring. Maybe there are relatives. A lot of times grandparents, some people who are retired, or a relative that's a teacher can offer some extra support and see if they're available. 
And then um, if you talk to the high school, a lot of times the honor students are willing to do and sometimes have to do some tutoring. So look for ways to get some tutoring for your child if they're struggling this year. So the big thing is working together, being positive, um, setting a plan and, and setting a positive tone for, for the school year. Um, so have a good school year, make some great memories, learn a lot and have fun.